So, tell me something terrible. Yeah. Now I am. Okay. All right. Do you want to tell your bad joke again? <laughs> hey, come here often. <laughs> no, it's not as good as the first time. No. This is weird. Yep. Okay. Should I start? Hi. I'm Scott. And I'm Tiffany. And this is a bonus episode of Tell Me Something Terrible. Was that game show hosty enough for you? No. Okay. Good. So, uh, this is weird, but... Uh, no, I mean, I want you to try harder. This is, Don't be... Don't <laughs> no. try. Just not stop. Don't be me to me. Um, so, yeah, this is a bonus episode. Patreon only. Um... I was going to edit that in, but I just thought I'd do it on the fly. Just kidding. Um, anyway, we uh, see so yeah, we're doing a bonus episode in which I'm going to tell a terrible story to Tiff yep. instead of the other way around. It's probably going to be a lot less funny. Probably not, but I can guarantee the reading will be worse. <laughs> but I did local, so I know how to pronounce all the towns. Oh, good. So I won't even butcher that. So I'm really excited about next week's town name are you yep okay is it like a layup of a joke because that's what i need nope oh well i mean like yes because i've listened to the jokes my entire life can you do one in piscataway new jersey no oh because that'd be that's where the university of rutgers is rutgers university i don't know how they are you you are i don't know but anyway rutgers that school it's in piscataway full of useless information Yep, I made an Annapolis joke, which is where the University of Maryland is. Now I've made a Piscataway joke. Watch out, East Lansing. That's a Big Ten joke. Getting all those sports references in there. And everybody just turned everything off. Yep, pretty much. Are you ready to do this? Yep. Okay. So, uh, I pretty much crushed the first paragraph without reading the first paragraph. Proud of you. So I'm going to skip that. Okay. Pretty much just saying this is for Patreons and like they're the real MVPs. Well, MVP. P. Hey, so you know far. what? In the future, we might have hundreds of them. <laughs> Doubtful. <but>. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't <laughs> Maybe mean we'll to... have a dozen of them. Okay. So, either way. But it's going to be backlogged, so anyone who subscribes at any time can listen to these. Exactly. So that's fun and scary it, for me to think of. Yep, and listen to our self-deprecating humor. All right. You ready? Yes. Let's do this shit. Okay. Do you know... Okay. Quick background. We are from Jackson, Michigan. The county of Jackson, Michigan. People can find that pretty easily. Are you going to do Kip's Taco? No. Oh, damn. But do you know what the most famous unsolved murder is in Jackson County? And by unsolved, I mean nobody was ever convicted, but they definitely should have been probably maybe speculation. No. No? No. It happened in 1883. Still any hints? <gasps> Shut up. Is it the Crouch murder? It is the Crouch yes! murder. Yes! Do you know anything about the Crouch Murders? Yes. Okay, good. I'm sorry. You made it was in every, the book. It was I know. In the book that Luda got me. You made every bar go red on the screen. So good job. Um, I knew there was a part that I left out about one of the witness or one of the people who testified at the trial. What? One of the people that testified at the I've trial. I've never heard about the trial. Oh, one of the I, people that testified at the trial later got axe murdered by her husband, and I'm pretty sure shut that the fuck up. I'm pretty sure that was in the book you had. I thought. No. Oh, I didn't. That's literally, there was one sentence about it. I told you. And it said one of the 145 witnesses of this murder. 145 witnesses? Uh, That doesn't surprise me. They literally were like, hey guys, these people died. And then like everybody in their town just walked through. You've never heard about the trial? No, I only know the murders. Oh, well. And like what happened, what they think happened that night. Yeah. (gasps) Okay. I told you. I told you, you were like all nervous. Like, oh, she probably knows this one. But you have heard of it. Yes, but I don't know like past like the night or like the few days after. Okay. So yeah, most of this is about the trial and about the shadiness. And that's of very everything. near us. Um, It's about a 15 minute drive from here. Yeah. This is the story that inspired the haunted thing where the ghost yes, comes out November the, 21st yep. and the mist between, and all that. The, between the daughter okay. and the... Okay. So we're going to... I'm just going to do sources now because... um. There is... We have the book somewhere. Okay. Anyway, I read an MLive article that went in depth. It was by Leanne Smith. It was a peek through time, the Mm -hmm. Crouch Murders. And then on top of that, there was um, on a website called Haunted... Hold on. I should actually read this. Mm -hmm. 
um, hauntedtravelsmi.com. There's these two ladies that wrote a book um, called Haunted Travels Michigan. And this is in their second volume one. They go through the Crouch Murders. That we apparently need to now own. Yeah, there's two of them. Um, But anyway, they had a video documentary on their website (gasps) made by JTV, which is a local TV station, in which they went through and pretty much told the story. Not all the details, but enough details. So that's where. Was that the documentary that you were like, shh? Shop. Yeah, I kept hushing, hushing you and Lily, and when I was trying to watch, yeah, it's like twenty whatever minute documentary. It took me two days to watch. I'm you, so excited. So anyway, um, so that's where I got most of this from. Between those two is kind of where I piece this together. So, are you ready for me to actually start? Or okay, yes, you with the the question. Did we want to stop this now? Since that's a good. Oh yeah, okay. that's fine. There is going to be a video teaser for this on social media, which if you are listening to this you probably saw and that's probably how you got here okay sit your ass back down let's finish this what are you doing okay anyway all right so i'm going to start with the words also i am a fast talker typically and i'm an even faster reader and an even bigger mumbler all of these are true so i might drop an r but you just everything i speak efficiently (laughs) thank you um but I will try my best to not speak like William Shatner, but not speak like myself. Somewhere in between. Good luck. That's what we're going for. Thank you. Okay, ready? So you obviously know the most famous unsolved murder. All right. So this is the overly dramatic headline from the New York frickin' Times. You ready? Dead in their beds riddled with pistol bullets. That's what the headline of the New York Times, like New York City, said. I didn't realize it got that big. It was everywhere. We'll get to that. Okay. So I'm these are the Crouch so murders that right took now. place in Spring Arbor Township Farmhouse on a stormy night in November of 1883, which is like 140 whatever years ago. Still not as old as our house. Correct. Um, the people that lived here may have gone and seen it. Probably. Probably. Anyway. Um, and of all things, there was a thunderstorm in late November, mm-hmm. which it doesn't thunderstorm a lot. It's usually snow by then. That's a summer, spring, fall maybe, but primarily summer thing. Anyway. Um, and that allegedly hid the gunshot sounds that led to the murders of 74-year-old Jacob Crouch, his eight-month pregnant daughter, Eunice White, her husband, Henry White, and a cattle buyer from Pennsylvania named Moses Polly. I don't remember the cattle buyer part. Okay. Well, there's four of them. Okay. A dad named Jacob. He's mm-hmm. 74. Yep. His two daughters. You know, his daughter and his daughter's husband and this cattle buyer named Moses. Okay, Jacob Crouch, who okay. said said to have moved to Michigan from New York with only four hundred bucks to his name, which I say only four hundred bucks, but it's eighteen eighty three, so that's a decent amount of money. Yeah, it's probably like five hundred um, thousand by now. But he rose to be one of the richest men in the state through hard work at his cattle farm. So he ended up owning like a thousand acres mm-hmm. cattle farm. Rich has dude. a road named after him. Okay, I thought that was named for Barty Crouch. Just kidding. Um, uh, tick two for the Harry Potter references. Yes, now? yes. Okay. So while known for being super rich, he was also known for being a grumpy old dick. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> the only person that he ever seemed to actually be nice to was Eunice, who was by far his favorite daughter. So that's the one that's in the house when right because the there's another family living. His other daughters down. Can the you road. not try to Sorry. guess all the stories? Sweet. <laughs> um, Eunice eventually married neighboring farmer Henry White, mm-hmm. but they still lived with her father because he was old and. She was the favorite, and that's how you become the favorite, by catering to your dad's wants. Aren't you excited for the day we have to take care of my dad? Not uh, my mother. God, um, let's hope nobody in my family's listening to this. Just threw me under the bus. Let's not go into a therapy session. We don't have <laughs> enough alcohol in the house. All right, so let's go to the night of the murders, which is what the part you know about. Mm-hmm. Um, the Moses Polly guy named at the beginning that you didn't hadn't heard of, he was there... Only because him and Jacob had just done a major deal. He's the guy that hid in the box. I don't know about a box. Different murder. Different murder. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I was going to say, by box, do you mean the bed where he shot three times in? No. Okay, because that's not a good hiding spot. Not a great hiding spot. I have so... I told you. That's why I got to read things. Because, like, I have too much that I will get mixed up. Yeah. Okay, so he's only there because they just done a major business deal. Like, cattle farmer, cattle buyer. Makes sense, right? Yep. Okay. Um... They had drinks and dinner at Jacob's house afterwards, mm-hmm. and it was obviously when it's a warm day in November, and you can see the storm rolling in. He's like, "Don't leave. It's eighteen eighty three. Just crash here. Right. Whatever. Don't get stuck um, on like your 
horse in the middle of the woods. Yeah, and because of the weather, it was like super ominous out. So he's like, just stay here. So around 1 a.m., they're far. the people with the tornado. Yes. Where the, well, yeah, where it's three miles wide, and they're just like, la di da, oh shit, we're dead. <laughs> yes. And there's kids flying in it. All right. And one unknown sheriff. <laughs> yes. I didn't put the sheriff's name in here, um, but I'll remember it eventually. Um, around 1 a.m., their farmhand, George Bowles, it's spelled Bolus, but they said Bowles. Anyway, um, thought he was awoken by the storm until he looked out and saw someone outside the house with a lantern and another person out by the barn. So he looked out, saw two people. He Super assumed fast. it was Crouch and another one, someone else on the farm, just because it's storming. Like right. They figured they're on the animals. closing up the barns, doing all that. So then he went back to bed. Soon after, he heard footsteps followed by loud bangs. He had hoped it was still the storm at this point until he heard a woman crying out. Oh. Um, but bear in mind, this is in Michigan in 18.3. This is a 16-year-old black kid hearing all this, so he hid in his room. That, I think, is what I'm saying. So he just of. hid in his room until morning. Because he was a suspect. Yeah. So the next day, he got up, and before he even, like, he went and got a neighbor. They came in. They discovered the four bodies. Right. Yeah. Like, for the most part, Michigan is obviously a free state. Yes. Also, like, he legit could have been a runaway slave and is like, don't get me involved. I could get shipped down the river. Yes. Like, um, an actual concern. Yeah. So... I'm not going to go like, you know, the like it's four people got shot. There's not a lot to go into Mm -hmm. besides that. So the theory is Jacob was shot first. Um, Mainly he had one bullet in him and that was it. Um, And he was the first, first room in the house. Yes. Yes. No, no, no. Then Moses, then Henry and finally Eunice. And she's the only one that was awake. They think Mm. Um, granted it's storming. They'd all been drinking. Like, and like, it's a oh, pistol, yeah. so it's not like a shotgun going off. Right. Um, How many times have you woke me up at five o'clock in the morning to leave? And then like three hours later, I'm like, oh, he's gone. Or our dog can drinking. be like trying to wake me up and I like z- n- yeah. and not don't acknowledge it. The reason they think she was awake and was the only one that actually saw the murders was because she had defense marks on her arms and her eyes were wide open. They, mm. they found her with her eyes wide open. They definitely didn't mention that. In, I mean, this book was a little lighthearted. Like, there's like 10 pages per story. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the other one, like, one of the other stories was like this man who traded his woodworking tools. Um, for, yeah. Yeah. No, sorry. His he waited. Wife he, for a woodworking yeah, he, tools. He traded his overly sexual wife for his new woodworking tools and like 12 bucks because he couldn't keep up with her to like a neighbor. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, yay, 1880s. Right. So here's a fun fact about um, Eunice. Because she was found with her eyes wide open, it was the only one they thought had seen the murder. Ooh, it's the thing where they cut off their heads and do the thing. No. Oh, sorry. Can you jump to one less conclusion? No. Jeepers, (laughs) ma'am. Do you want the papers? No. Okay. (laughs) All right. No, they had a photographer from Ann Arbor come in. Right, with the eyes. Yeah, and take a picture of her eyes to see if the image of the killer was still reflected in them. That shit happened a lot. People were crazy. But it was determined that too much time had passed, Mm -hmm. is all. Um, Not that it's literally impossible, but okay. Anyway, they don't know how eyes work. It's 1883. (laughs) They opened the film and it dissolved because of Basquiat. Anyway, um, so naturally, a crowd gathered. (laughs) That's another Harry Potter reference. Okay, (laughs) so a crowd gathered at this point, upwards of 100 people, before the sheriff can ever get there. Um, so essentially the crime scene is fucked. Okay. Um, oh, although yeah. it's 1883, I don't think the forensics were going to be like super locked down anyway. No. Um, but because of, you know, the era and the rarity of mass murders that seem, you know, seem to be like kind of senseless, the news spread far and wide. And people will legit like take shit from the I know the podca- podcast I listened to today was Axe Murder 1 and people were taking parts of a guy's skull when they were like walking through after. Was anyway. it the jazz one in New Orleans? No. Okay. Anyway. So this reached the New York Times, Chicago Tribune, Boston, California. It was everywhere. Shut the fuck up. California? Everywhere. Oh, my God. It was a, it was a, cent- I mean, a mass murder. I mean, it was in one house, was, four yeah. people. But still, like, no, it was on. It was making waves everywhere. I mean, like, in Jackson, it was kind of like a big deal back in the 1880s because, like, the hub with the, you know, in the Well, prison. and there was articles, like, because there's train tracks all over mm-hmm. and there's, like, a train going right through yeah. that area. Where um, I used to work wa- was, like, but- a station for, like. Yeah. Soldiers. Yeah. And like that has like that trail that goes right through there. Mm-hmm. The, that's Long now like waters. a walking trail. Yeah. Um, they would slow the train down so people could stop and look at the, like get off, look at the house and then get back on and go. Shut the fuck up. We can see the spot from Falling Waters. 
I don't know. Why didn't we know this when we lived out there? It's probably on Crouch Road. That crosses. It's fine. Yeah. We're fine. Okay. <laughs> um, the house got burned down. So like Thursday. The house doesn't, I, the house doesn't exist. It doesn't matter. I you still want to see it. Thursday, me and Lil have nothing going on. We've got the bikes in the garage. Nothing better to do. So I know what I'm doing. Well, you can go to the cemetery. It's the one with the black um, iron, Reynolds black Road. iron yeah. gates around. They it. put up like cops, like that no. time of year. Okay, but people no. patrol it to make sure that there are not people in the graveyards. It, this was because it's you. between the one and the one on okay. Mount. Sorry. This is going to be a four-hour long episode. <laughs> anyway, this is why you don't do topics. I, how good was I during your tuberculosis episode? I barely said a peep. Okay, but you were all like, mm, I don't know that much about tuberculosis. Anyway, <laughs> or the cave that I'd been in myself too. Um, so there's a the documentary that i watched okay on like the their website there's a guy that owns the antique store in jackson and he went there in 1997 and he hopped the fence and he went into the place on the night of and this is just a random dude and you can see like the his look in his eyes when he's, he Wait, like the one that we go to downtown um i don't know if it was that one it just said antique store owner so i don't i assume it was that one anyway because I've never met the guy that actually owns a place. But he said he hopped the fence. He was in there on that night, and he hopped the fence. And while standing there, felt three taps on the bottom of his shoe. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, and he said he's never been back since. Stop it. And, he, and he's like a six-year-old like guy, looks completely normal. And he was like, never again. Oh, no. This is where we need to go. I'm telling you. You're all like, anyway. I'm a skeptic. This shit will rock your world. Please. Anyway, I don't even know where I was because I don't have a pen. Okay, so. Sorry. Do you need a pen? It's okay. No, I'm on. I'm halfway through the second page of this, and we're 20 minutes in. Okay. So, originally, the list of suspects was long. They took anyone and everyone in consideration, even jailing George and the other houseworker that were the only two left alive. Also, her last name was Reese. Now, don't know who she is. She was a houseworker back then. It's like Julia Reese or something. Um, They both went into custody because they- Do you need to pull out your genealogy book? No. Uh, But they assumed- um, Do-do-do. I mean, like, your grandma wasn't far from it. But they were soon released for lack of evidence. Eventually, two main suspects arose. The first being Daniel Holcomb, who's Jacob's son-in-law, and Judd Crouch, the oft-forgotten youngest son of the Crouch family. <laughs> He's the one with the limp, right? No. Ah, oh, fuck. What? Murder, then? Are I will sure? tell you the details. Okay. If you keep guessing, we will stop. <laughs> I will turn this fucking car around. Okay. <laughs> Up to this point... Are we there yet? Judge was best known for being the birth that had killed Jacob's wife, Anna Holcomb, six days after his delivery. Already not the favorite. No. Judd's a real character <laughs> Judd's a real character, and his childhood was seriously fucked up. For one, he had a clubbed foot. That's what it was. I know, I was gonna tell you that. Fuck off. And a hunch back. This is why I write shit down. <laughs> anyway, to make matters worse, he was raised by his sister Susan and her husband Daniel, the guy I mentioned as a suspect. Down the road. And no one told Judd that they weren't his parents yep. until he was 10. Yep. That, I didn't know it was 10. I just thought they kept it from him his whole life. Instead, the grumpy asshole who never talked to him or looked at him because of his deformities was actually his dad. Yeah. Jacob. Yep. So, the motive behind Judd being a suspect is pretty obvious. Yes. <laughs> but Dan- you, dad. But Daniel, not so much. But apparently, when Jacob ditched Quasimodo on Daniel, oh <laughs> he promised to pay him essentially child support to raise his kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, people are like, mm, he's so sweet. He went to Spring Arbor. We can't cuss around him. We got to be careful. And then you fucking drop that. Well, this. OK, so the child support thing never na- happened. So naturally, Daniel was pissed. Oh, of course. And then his uh, his sister-in-law, I guess, Eunice who's the favorite, was about to pop out another kid. So Daniel's chance of ever getting paid for mm-hmm. raising Judd was pretty much dwindling. Also super, super sus is the fact that Daniel had a life insurance policy out on Jacob that was forged. <laughs> oh. So he, oh. he took out a life insurance policy on his father-in-law. Had somebody else sign it and then for forged, him. Yeah, so, his, so Jacob didn't even know it was out on him. Oh, my. That was... more wow. su- More suspicious. The murders... The bullets they retrieved were with a thirty-eight caliber pistol. Hmm. Daniel owned a thirty-eight caliber pistol hmm. that somehow was lost once the police arrived. Hmm. Um, so missing from the Crouch house uh, the night of the murders was a box of documents containing records of land ownership and stocks and whatnot. Um, but that was missing on land But cash was left behind. They didn't take the cash. They okay. just took a box full of all these papers that were... Uh, Jacob Crouches. Right. And so, like, if you have a life insurance policy and you're, like, essentially an heir to 
whatever or like could possibly because you no, know no. Eunice and her husband were probably the actual heir so this brother is like mm, I'm gonna steal this shit and like, probably get it son in law too yeah right so it's no longer Eunice it's now the second daughter that's gonna be the heir to all of these acres and all this no, money this no no Eunice farm. was still gonna get like before all the murders Eunice was gonna get willed all of the farm and everything right but, but if the they son took law, all of the deeds and oh, shit yeah. it'd be easy for him to be like sorry this document that i found with his actual signature on it suddenly says now it belongs to us and not her you all, know i yeah. feel like they'd be really easy to forge too later on yep also found outside of the house at the contaminated crime scene were footprints that included a clubbed foot <laughs> um please. yeah but like come on it's muddy it they like that's like fucking half it had swamp just land out stormed there. so these are fresh footprints all right valid <laughs> i mean it could have been a team effort and police are also suspect because it's a farmhouse they only have lanterns it's pitch black inside hold on wait the brother who's wi- raising the the like daughter and the son-in-law who's raising the judd, judd are all in one household together yes oh ten fo- they live they're neighbors they yeah. live right on no, the road. No, I knew they were neighbors. Yeah. So there's no way in hell both of them weren't like, mm, maybe we should do this together, you know? Yeah. Anyway, the police suspected Wild because the house was going to be pitch black inside, the murderers must have known their way around. Right. That makes sense. Okay. So. this Otherwise, is, shit would get knocked over, yes. right? Yeah. So one week afterwards, on Thanksgiving, the sheriff goes back to check on the property. After, after the original investigation had been boarded up and nailed shut, when he goes... Guess who has gone ahead and moved themselves in? Mm, I'm going to say the neighbors down the street. Daniel fucking Holcomb. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's pretty ballsy, I'd say. Um, I mean, he has the deeds. So, well, and, and like he has the keys and yeah, anyway. So several months later, Daniel and Judd are finally arrested. And this is where shit gets crazy. <laughs> so this is probably where the story, as far as you know, right? Yeah. Okay. that That's like the boring part of the story. <laughs> This is the fun part. I'm so excited. Okay. So people start dropping like flies. Okay. Okay. So during the pretrial, people start going missing or flat out refusing to testify. Shut the fuck up. Susan Holcomb. Hold on. Which one? That's, that's, that's the daughter. Daniel's wife okay. and Judd's sister mom. Um, <laughs> she was found dead in her bed. Shut the fuck up. Some say she was force fed rat poison. Others claim it was a suicide to prevent testifying against Daniel and Judd. I mean, like, it could be suicide via rat poisoning. That would be a horrible but way whether, to die. But women usually die by, like, pills It's hard. And I mean, it's 18, anyway. eight, like, yeah. So the coroner ruled her heart just gave out, which her doctor found interesting because she had no known heart problems. Of course. Doctor got slipped a hundy and... Yeah. So <laughs> there's that. That's weird thing number one. Okay. Then there's the Holcomb farmhand, James Foyce. This is the one that lives on Daniel Holcomb's farm. Okay. Down um, the street. Yeah, he was known to go to like the saloons and stuff and kind of speculate um, with the locals. Just gossip and spread yeah. rumors. So Sounds he, like my kind of guy. So two days after Susan Holcomb died, he committed suicide, quote, quote unquote. Oh, yeah, was he shot twice in the back of the head? It was, he shot himself in the back of the head. Oh. And there was, a, but, and he managed to not leave any gun residue on himself. Huh. But it, too was ruled a suicide. Sure. And he was said to testify at the trial also. So Sheriff got slipped a hundy too. No, it happened in their house. Right, but the person in who Daniel investigated Holcomb's. still like... Oh, it's 1883. They're just going to take Daniel... Wholesome Daniel Holcomb at his words. Mm-hmm. Hold on, I got to take a drink of wine. Next is, a, next is a little uh, off the beaten path. So a bunch of people came to investigate this. Okay. Some were actual private investigators and like cops... And some were just people pretending to be such. <laughs> like we would, let's be honest. Yeah, one, I'd be like, take me there. I need to see the gunshots. One of the legit PIs that came was a guy named Galen E. Brown. So he was so legit, he was actually going to testify in the trial. Um, so he had collected evidence that he was going to present. So at one day, after walking from the Crouch home to a nearby town, he was shot in the chest. He lived... I think I've heard about this part. Okay. He lived. Because it was across like some weird, like right before like a weird little like river thing in the woods. I, I, there wasn't coordinates. Okay. He was just shot in the chest. So he lived. So he was still going to testify after he recovered from being shot in the chest. Holy shit. Dedication. The, the day he went to testify, when he woke up, everything he owned had been stolen. 
every inch of clothes, everything. So he could not go to trial because he couldn't, he didn't have clothes to wear. But there the tr- wasn't a friendly neighbor being the like, trial, my pants? But the trial pressed on without him. Later on, he would claim that Judd is the one that shot him, but it was never proven. So Judd walked up to him, point blank, and shot him in the chest. But, I'm pretty sure that but part that was alone, mentioned because that, I remember it being like on like a tr- like a two track trail thing, and he was on his know. horse, and there was like a weird little swampy because it's Michigan and half the fucking state is swamp like area. I do remember that okay. being mentioned. So at this point, the trial becomes a giant shit show. The evidence itself is weak without forensics and right. all and everything, and every key witness now is either dead or has suddenly refused to show. Hmm. I wonder why. So still, both sides call a parade of 145 people from both sides. But still only offered circumstantial evidence and could not positive, positively <laughs> say who pulled the trigger. Jury came to a verdict of not guilty in one hour. They went in. They said. So the jury got slips and hundies too. No, they could not say. He, they were. Like, I know. There was but no like, defense. If you have 145 witnesses and they're enough circumstances. They're both, they're both like, sides. They're both sides of the coin. Okay. Allegedly. All right. So quick side story is on Daniel's brother, Henry Holcomb. This was too fun to not put in here, so I had to throw it in. Um, so this dude wanted to play detective as well. So he donned a disguise and went slumming around the shady areas of Jackson looking for details, allegedly. Um, so in the bars on East Michigan? I don't know. Oh, but, yeah, they were real slummy. But later on, um, he had testimony that led to the arrest of a guy named Joseph Allen, who's a former Jackson machinist who was arrested in Ontario, Canada. Uh, he was found to be in possession of all those, all of Jacob Crouch's deeds, mortgages, and land patents um, that had gone missing from the home. But he said he only had them because Henry Holcomb gave them to him. <laughs> so literally, he's like, oh, you're going to Canada? Will you take these with you like for me? Right. And then he called him out and said, well, he's the guy that did it. So he's just planting that seed price to try to help get his brother. Right. Off the hook. Except like he should have given him a little bit more information or like, I don't know, paid him a little bit more money or like. Fuck you. I'm not going to jail because you murdered your entire family. So while this is technically an unsolved case, Mm -hmm, and this is, I mean, to any of of the Holcomb family listening, you know, this is all circumstantial. (laughs) Also, Um, we don't blame you because you're like great, great grandfather's piece of shit. So here's, here's, there's no conclusion to this story, but here's a little like, where are they now? Well, not now they're dead. But so what happened to, (laughs) they are six feet under. Do you want to know what happened to Judd? Yes. Okay. So eventually he did inherit the family farm. Really? Who else was going to get it? I don't know. This daughter? You're right. It's the 1880s. Both daughter. The one daughter got shot. The the other daughter poisoned. So it's just him. We're fine. Not the husband, though? Not the husband of the... the... Daniel? Yeah. No. He wasn't family. Okay. So anyway. So he got the family farm. I mean, like, I get it, but like also the patriarch. It was estimated to be worth $50,000. Which, in 1887, I looked it up, is now just over $1 million. Holy shit. Yeah. So, Quasimodo just became a millionaire. (laughs) Um, Eventually, he lost the property to the bank. Yep. But it was like a thriving business. (laughs) When his dad, when his dick father was running it. Well, you know what? Um, Sometimes you got to be shrewd. And in 1947, the house was burned down to suspected arson. Curious and curious there. I wonder who did it. Maybe the person who was in debt. And there was um, an, a blip in the thing I was watching where every document for this case no longer exists. It all got taken out of the Jackson County huh. Police Department. Like, this is a long time ago, but there's no documentation of it. It all got removed. Like, it all got stolen or it's missing or whatever. Mm, was it, quote unquote, fire damage or, quote unquote, flood know. damage? Because that know. seems how, like, all evidence disappears. Okay. I don't know. Anyway, so... Lastly, we'll do what happened to uh, to Daniel. Daniel's life never gets normal. Okay. So guy. this dude remarried. Maybe. And moved to Wisconsin. Who do you think he remarried? Remarried. I said remarried. Who do you think he remarried? Or who do you think his second wife was? Wisconsin. No. Nope. Was it H.H. H. Holmes' sister? No. It was Amanda Crouch, cousin of his or first wife, <laughs> so how long was he fucking her <laughs> oh my god so he marries this amanda chick who and moves to th- with her family over in wisconsin so <laughs> yeah so he just can't get enough crouch woman in his life 
<laughs> but this woman also comes from wealth because their whole family. Right. Yeah. Rich. So first couple years, pretty normal. Mm-hmm. And then old Daniel starts getting a little goofy again. Did they slip him some mercury? No, no. He keeps having recurring dreams in which he drowns in a river. Like, he keeps telling people, let me rephrase that. He keeps telling people he has these recurring dreams in which he drowns in a river. And then one day he goes fishing, which wasn't on, what which wasn't uncommon, but this time he went fishing by a cliff. He left in all, Wisconsin? Yeah, I guess the Milwaukee River, I think they were saying. Okay. Cliff, all rivers have some sort of cliff. Anyway, sure. all of his stuff is sat next to a cliff. And he was dis- it folded nicely and he disappears, which is weird. Right. But nobody was ever found in the river, but everyone assumes like he may have actually like had a premonition of his own death or someone pushed him, you know, whatever. One year later, one year later, almost to the day he shows up on his daughter's door in Chicago. Shut the fuck up! He shows up on his daughter's doorstep in Chicago, claiming to have no idea what's happened in the previous year. <laughs> oh, this motherfucker. <laughs> Set so, up his own quote unquote possible death, yeah, and faked amnesia for a year. Piss off, like yep. Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you had amnesia for a year, your brain would be so traumatized, there'd be like nicks, like there'd be a whole hunk of your fucking head missing. <laughs> like, that's no, I'm sorry, yeah. So, that was totally um, preemptive, sat the groundwork for yeah. it. Like, mm, everybody's stupid in the 1880s. They'll totally believe me. So this is not going to be super satisfying, but this is the way it goes. So um, at this point, he gets back, you know, at that time, then he goes back to Milwaukee, reunites with his wife, okay. that whole thing. At this point, um, she gets a little suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Um, and she this ru- is the second wife? Clearly this is the, this is the second. Then. This is the second crowd, yeah. Right. So, um, once again, he's written out of the Crouch family will. Also, I'm very proud of you for not, at one point, I would have fucking said Crouch at some point <laughs> right? during this, so I'm proud of you. So, once again, he's written out of the Crouch family will, this okay. time for not being of sound mind. Hmm. Not because they're all dead. Um, three months later, though, she dies. Huh. After Was it a rat poisoning? It was just, I don't know, it didn't actually say, just at, three months after writing him out of the wheel, will, she dies. Hmm. So, yeah, I know you're shocked. Um, but, yeah, that's where it all <laughs> kind of comes to an unsatisfying. Are you okay over there? <laughs> There's lights that I can't figure out. Okay. What I think it might be. I think I know what it is. Okay. You seem concerned. Anyway. I so, just We never look out this window when there's not leaves. So yeah. <laughs> I, I think I know where that floor is. Nope, that doesn't make any sense. Because it's that way. Can we nope, ha- it is that way. We're fine. I know where that billboard is. Oh, good. <laughs> billboard like we live in a city. Anyway, so all in all, it's a pretty crazy unsolved murder that probably should have been solved, but who are we to speculate, even though we always do? Mm-hmm. Um, Allegedly, so yeah, please and I already, sue us years later. <laughs> so yeah, I already gave sources, but that was... So yeah, I know you, I was going to assume you'd heard of it because oh, it is so sure. famous. Yes. But I was hoping there was parts of it you hadn't heard, yes. especially like the aftermath. No, I've literally only read like maybe a dozen pages of like the little clip clip mm-hmm. like sort of what happened that night and the, but there was no wild speculation there was no like this is where the family is afterwards like that's fucking crazy yeah it just never got normal no yes also you can tell i am way more into this than you are because i'm like please tell me everything it's just our personalities um i love copious amounts of information all the information i, I will take it i, I will lose it I but knew, I want all the information. I also know that you're more of an interrupter than I am. I'm so I kept I it short. So sorry. I kept it a little short because, like, I didn't want this to be an hour long because ain't nobody got time for that shit. I'm sorry. Um, but you know, you don't want to shortchange a potential Patreon. Mm. But um, I also don't want. Yeah, there's only so much of us I can take, mm-hmm. let alone strangers. Yeah. Or Patreons, I guess, aren't strangers. They're our best friends. All of them. The Whether closest, we know you or not. The closest of friends. Yes. And we're going to have parties together and like chats like monthly if we get enough people to have chats with. If you subscribe to $5 or more, question mark. Huh? What was the Discord? That's everybody. That That is. The even Discord's a, even everybody. Even at a dollar. If it's not, it will be. It it's getting low. It's lonely in there. No, so lonely. <laughs> But anyway, just poor old Jamie, who we've known forever, <laughs> and he's also had to deal with both of us very drunk. Oh, that was a long, long time ago. Mm-hmm. I fell off the stage. Yeah, pregnant. Didn't know it. 
Didn't know it. That's yeah. why I was drunk. <laughs> caveat. Caveat. But anyway. The doctor said it was fine. She's fine. She's at a third grade reading level and she's seven. She's so fine. Right. So how do you feel? Since you always ask me that. So excited. Like, I know that sounds stupid, but like, I knew about the murders. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew it was clearly sus. I There was never like... So you're the terrible person and I'm the terrible joke maker. We figured it out. Oh, uh, we did. We already knew I was a terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> Trauma can do that to you. Um, and if you made it this far, do you want to say this time? If you've made it this far, congratulations. <laughs> you're more terrible than most. No, um, no you it, are more terrible than most. Yes. Or, and yeah. Yeah. But that's why you paid to, to be here. Yes. So that's a loyalty that... Only money can buy. And we really appreciate it. <laughs> we have a price. It's very, very low. Very low. low. <laughs> very low. <laughs> but anyway, and I already did sources. So I feel like I'm like forgetting something, but I did them. At the beginning. I went off script for one thing and it's That's ruining. That's fine. You know, it's kind of mix and match. You do beginning, you do the end, whatever. I do at the end because like. You normally forget. Also, I, I'm so glad we don't have to do like in the parentheses where you're like, this article on this page number and like yeah. blah, 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 the way you did in like school. Mm-hmm. I just be like, look, I collected all of this information. Yeah, and it's paraphrased. Someone was left out from much. here and then I took it from here and patched it together. And the last episode I was reading, that I was researching for, like he did a fine job writing, but you can tell like he was a white man um, when he wrote it because there was a few times I'm like, I'm Lily's a- like playing like on the floor and I'm like, what the fuck? Because <laughs> then you know, there's a couple things, you know. I'm gonna. I'm all, a raging feminist, though. So I'm gonna cut all this out anyway. Oh, good. You just been rambling about citations Ra- for I three minutes. I love rambling about citations. Anyway, um, so yeah, we won't even put like stuff at the end of this, except the music or anything, because y'all are already here. So yep. And we appreciate your support very much. So because you know we do this for fun, but doing it if we net zero loss, that's more fun. Yes. Yeah. As long as all. we break even, <laughs> and even if we don't break even. We're going to keep doing it. Yeah. And it's because it's a better waste of resources than like other alternative situations. Eh, I could be playing video games right now. So Mm. (laughs) just kidding. Love you. Yeah. I love you too. Mm. All right. That's gross. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Oof. That was terrible.